Hey everybody, we are live. And to be back, it's great to be here. We are uh, now on the third part of this uh, going, this ongoing series uh, about uh, people who are inspiring me. It's called You Inspire Me, and today. Uh, the the amazing person who's going to be joining us is uh, nobody other than Kerli, uh, and I know a lot of you guys have been looking forward to this. Uh, I know that she has inspired lots of people around the world, so I'm glad that uh, I'm glad that you all are here for this talk. Uh, the idea behind it was just to be able to shine a spotlight on some of the people who have kind of stood out uh, to me in the last uh, few years, uh, just people whose work that I've admired and people who want to, who make me want to uh, do better, do more, be more uh, personally too. And Kerli has especially inspired me with her, her songwriting um, and uh, just the way that she, the way that she makes music and uh, uh, put your hands together and uh, let's, Let's uh, let's get Gerli on the line with us. There she is! Hey! Woo. Hi! Hello! It's crazy. Your sound has like gone down a lot since I came online. It has gone down a lot. Yeah, so you, like your volume so you, was higher. I wonder if it's just like a function of the techie side of the things. So you can't you you can you hear me all right right now or? I can hear you. I can hear you. It's just not very loud. It's okay. <laughs> okay. Well, I'll try and I'll come a little bit closer. I'll go like this. We'll just make it super intimate like this. Okay. How's that sound? That's almost ASMR. I know. People love that kind of stuff. I love it. <laughs> I honestly, I, I don't, I can't really stand ASMR. To me, it's, I, I see how it is like very relaxing for some people. But for me, I'm just like, nah, I can't, I can't dig it. I don't know what it is about it. But why do you like it so much? I don't know. I just, I get the tingles. I get the yeah. whole thing. Like, I love it. Yeah. <laughs> for me, for me, I, it's just funny because I can, I picture the person just like filming themselves while they're like crinkling some packages. Yeah. I, th yeah. I think it must become like a, almost like a trance, like action for them too at some point you know what i mean definitely definitely yeah definitely they're just like you know this is my thing and i mean so many people love it so they bring joy to the people who are there you know fans so everybody everybody wins out of it in the end right yeah I think so. listen i think it's okay. relaxing on, on both sides i think you're right uh almost like this interview right now i feel like this is relaxing on both sides too except i don't have a goblin Where's my goblet? I tell you, I put it somewhere. Okay, I don't have my goblet with me. But anyways, listen, uh, I don't know uh, if you are, if you're familiar, but I've been doing this series of talks with people who, who have, I've just kind of felt like this, I don't know, like, a, uh, I felt like they are doing something extraordinary. And for me, it has kind of made me want to be a better person or want or made me want to do better at what I do. And, um, and I'm so glad that you were willing to talk to me because you are one of those, you're one of those people uh, to me. And I'm going to tell you why in just, a, in just a few seconds. I remember the very first moment um, that I remember kind of being somehow like connected to you. Obviously, I knew about you a long time ago, but the first time I felt kind of like that we're kind of a little bit connected was um, when we have a, we have a common friend. Uh, named Ago. And uh, when he was working on a song and he asked for my input on it as well. And it was a song, um, I think it was maybe 2016. Uh, and it was for Christel and cartoon called Immortality. Do you remember? You remember yeah, that song. song? That song did good. <laughs> that song did good. And so basically, so the reason why the song did good or maybe not the reason but you were also one of the authors uh in that song along with lots of other really great people 
Um, and so, and I was so happy that he asked for my, like a little bit of input on that song. Obviously the, th the parts that I wrote didn't get put into the song later, but I felt like I was somehow connected to all these amazing songwriters because we had kind of worked on the same project even. So for me, that was like the first time when I felt, oh my goodness, I have worked on the same project as Gerli. This is amazing. So it was kind of like a very Funny. big moment for me. Yeah. I mean, it's weird how we have those moments, right? Mm -hmm. But yeah. anyways, uh, so tell me a little about why, why do you think you said, oh, Immortality, that was a big song. Why did you feel like that was, that was a big one? You know what? I actually didn't know that it, that it was a big one uh, in the beginning because I think how the song started or like what was left from the parts that I wrote was basically, I think it was the verse that I wrote. Okay. And it was, yeah. written, it was written on a completely different track of Agos, I think. And I actually, I wrote that song when I kind of came back from the States to live in Estonia and I was like in my grandma's yeah. attic or something. Yeah. <laughs> and it, it, it wasn't called Immortality. It was actually called, I'm not going to say the title because it's a pretty good title. I might want to keep it for something else. Okay, keep it. Yeah, but, keep but it, then, keep it, but, keep it. Yeah. But, yeah, but then I think Ago just kind of like, we didn't do anything with it really. And Ago just, he's like really good at taking like bits and pieces and bringing people together. So I think yeah. that's what happened. I yeah. think, I honestly, I don't know if you agree with this, but I think Ago, like tons of his songs are like this, where he, he starts, he writes something on, on one instrumental and then he just kind of like puts it on, not on the shelf, but he puts it somewhere like away in his mind. And then he waits for the exact like right moment. And then when it strikes that he's like, oh yeah, I have this melody or this thing that's gonna, you know, be perfect for this moment. Do you agree with that? I feel like he does that. Yeah, he's kind of a scientist like that. But I think <laughs> yes. some things, Yeah. yeah, yeah. But, but I think some things really just like, like they stay with you, you know? Yeah. Cause like some of, some of the songs that have become like really important later on ha aren't they usually are not the ones that click in the very beginning that's right that's right like, yeah yeah we had a song that we wrote with Ago that uh that was written on a completely different instrumental uh and that was cool that was kind of cool but then later like a week later he played it to me and it was like this it was completely different like than what we had recorded. And for him, that's just like normal. That's just normal that like, okay, I'll take this and I'll, I'll switch it around with the instrumental, but I'll keep everything that we recorded kind of the same. I, for me, that, like you said, that's kind of like mad science. And, but I feel like you, you do this too. Like you have, I know that you have lots and lots of songs that you have written that you kind of keep tucked away that, oh, I'm, you know, I might grab a bit of piece from, from here later on, you know? And I know that you do that too with the songs that you write. So maybe can you, can you, cause I mean, I, I just, I feel like the songs that you write and the lyrics that you write are so, I don't know, that they, they are, they're powerful. So can you walk us through just a little bit of what does that process kind of look like for you? Um, and uh, how do you, how do you come up with these things? You know, actually, my, my songwriting process has kind of like changed over the years a lot because when I was living yeah. in the States, I was doing a lot of professional songwriting. I, I would do two sessions a day. Yeah. And I'm like really grateful for that, like kind of like hustle work experience. Yeah. And, and you learn songwriting in those environments. You learn songwriting as a skill, you know, mm -hmm. and when you want to acquire a skill, it's pretty common knowledge that you need to put in the 10,000 hours, which I calculated. Yeah. And? You work every day is four, four years. Four years, okay. Four years. So if you want to, so, sometimes people come to me and they're like, oh, I want to be a great songwriter. Would you check out my song? I'm like, no, you go write 200 more and yeah. I'll check out that song. Yeah. Because there's, I don't even need to give you like any constructive criticism or I can give constructive criticism, but you just haven't put in the work that is necessary. And you have to kind of like wow. put yourself through like the discomfort of acquiring that skill, you know? But wow. then something really interesting happened to me uh, where I became so good at writing songs that I lost all the magic mm -hmm. 
you yeah. know almost when you require like so much skill and knowledge that you you almost can't go back to those like first places when you first start like when you're like 17 years old like do you remember the songs you wrote like i wrote like terrible songs but there's yeah. something in there yeah i know what you there, mean but like, there's sometimes there's, something in there right there's a, like an authenticity that that kind of gets lost maybe if you if songwriting becomes like your job. bread your bread and butter yeah mm -hmm. But how, so like, how like do it you, becomes, yeah. go oh, ahead. Sorry. No, you. <laughs> yeah, it's difficult. Well, like with the online, right? Because yeah. there's like a lag and then there's like a, uh, it becomes so mental that you lose the soul. You know what I mean? It becomes so intellectual trying to write this hit song mm -hmm. that you lose the essence of this innocence that like yeah. has not been bruised and told yeah. how to do it and being broken down yet, you know? Somebody you... saying, Abigail is saying, yeah, conditioned. You become conditioned. conditioned. Yeah, that's basically what's, what it is. Great, mm -hmm. Abigail. So when do you feel like that moment was for you when you were like, wait a second, now, now that I think about it, I've been, I haven't been true to, to, to the meaning of the song or something like that. When was that moment for you? I mean, I have been, it's not, it's not like, like I hadn't been true, but yeah. there was just at some point where I was like, this is not satisfying for me to do this, yeah. to do it like this. And sometimes like I'll, now I'm, I'm getting back to the place where I'll still do pop writing, which is a completely different mental process for me, just the yeah. way I approach it. Yeah. Uh, because my own art is so sacred to me. Yeah. But basically, so that's when I kind of like four years ago came back to Estonia. I kind of, I, I told my publisher, I'm not writing any more music. I need to go find myself. I don't know what I'm yeah. doing. I'm yeah. tired. I'm burnt out. I need to like go <laughs> and be in the silence. Yeah. And so for years, I wouldn't, I wouldn't even listen to any other music. I wouldn't watch any news. I wouldn't get any information. I would just like sit in the forest and I would like go deep down within myself and, yeah. and create like my art that I'm making now from like a totally different place. So now what do you feel like, because there's, there is, uh, there are certain things, I feel like there are certain things when you surround yourself with emptiness and you surround yourself with, you know, only, I guess you, you kind of, you know, you've made your like, your dream kind of temple there in the forest, right? Mm -hmm. Now, but sometimes in, I feel like it's the most like uncomfortable things in life that kind of give us the best lessons. So how is it that when you surround yourself with too much like comfort or, or, or joy, or even like uh, peace, where can, where do you find those moments of tension to write about? But I don't need the moments of tension anymore mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to write. I used to think that I need this like up and down emotions yeah, and things yeah. like, mm -mm. no, 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 no. I thrive on stability. Mm. I thrive on structure. I thrive mm. on discipline. Like I go to work every day. Like I'm yeah. not like just waiting for those like riding the unicorn type <laughs> of moments, even though when you show up, they do come, yeah. you know? Yeah. Like I do have this analogy with the muse. It's like, you're kind of like the servant for the muse. You're the mm. channel and you show up to your desk. Like the, the work desk is the first thing I built. I, I recently mm. just moved to Old Town here yeah. in Tallinn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, for the winter. And uh, the first thing I do, I set up my desk because if I don't have my desk, if I don't have my designated corner where yeah. I go to sit and do my work and put in the time, mm -hmm. basically I have to put in the time. Yeah. And then sometimes the muse comes. And after, let's yeah. just say you do like thousand hours on like a project. I mean, it's yeah. more, it's most likely going to be good. Mm. Yeah. If you put in the work, if you put in the work, if you put in the work, it's most it. likely going to be good. Like it's not very, it's not a magical process, you know? Mm. I like, I like where, I like what you're saying. I feel like it's a little bit, it's a little bit different than what usually what people think about songwriting. I think mm -hmm. when people think about songwriting, they usually think of this, that I have to, I have to wait for something, you know, mm -hmm. I have to wait for something to hit me, whether mm -hmm. it's, whether it's the tension in life, whether I have to wait for like a certain breakup to happen, mm -hmm. I have to wait for this, you know, this, this sudden, you know, uh, hit of inspiration. But what you're saying is that, wait a second, no, 
it's actually it's actually a matter of just getting better better at your craft and and doing the work so it's mm -hmm. not like i'm waiting for something but it's being proactive about it is that something that you've you've always known or that's something that you're kind of just you've been learning recently or i think i just learned it kind of pretty fast yeah into my career where i could see like i don't know do you know this song of mine feral hearts yes I, I think that was the song that really, really like, or the last time that like really honed it in for me. I think it was 8 p.m. I had just come home from the studio. I had yeah. the melody down and yeah. I was sitting in my home studio and, and I was, nothing was coming. Like <laughs> it was not coming. And I was like, okay, you're gonna sit here until midnight yeah, and then you can quit. Okay. And then by midnight I had like, a lot of the work done. That's great. I feel like for me, Self -discipline. It's, it's been the same way. Like when I tell to myself that, listen, for the next seven days, you're going to, you're going to finish a song every day, you know? And mm -hmm. I feel like, okay, that, that isn't everyone's process. Okay. Everybody doesn't work like that and that's fine. But for me, I feel like I need that. I need that boundary. You know, I mm -hmm. feel like that's, I feel like the boundary, it's a paradox the boundary becomes the freedom, you know? Yes. Uh, mm -hmm. And so I feel like that's exactly what you're saying is that, you know, you have to set some kind of limits and boundaries to your creativity in order to let it be its full flourish. potential. Yeah, flourish, flourish. exactly. It's, it's, it's almost like, uh, like your creativity is like a wild stallion. And then if you're very tenderly caring for it, you're, you're making the space for it that it can also come and run in. You give it really good nutrition, you know, like I'm very particular about like this, this very everyday type of things like sleep, yeah. nutrition, exercise, yeah. this, that, like neuroscience, like I love yeah. all of that, you know, I'm way into be, being a superhuman. Yeah. So it's like the, the creativity, that is the wild thing. And, and there is also a space where I am contained in a way when I go into my studio, but I'm also ah. not contained because I switch off my judgment. Great. Which is also something that I learned over the years. It's like, while I'm sitting here, I'm doing the work, but I'm not judging what I'm doing. Yeah, that's great. I'm not going to have any doubts. I'm not going to have any self-limiting beliefs. I'm not going to talk myself down. I'm not mm. making myself smaller. I'm not going to say this yeah. is dumb ever. Yeah. yeah. You know, I'm just going to do the work. And then at some point there's a there's a t the, the time to review the work yes. and like while it feels it feels when when it's truthful then you know it in your body mm, then there's even yeah. nothing to discuss yeah right yeah and and maybe for a lot of projects i feel like i don't know maybe maybe you disagree with me but for maybe some projects you don't even need that moment of let me review it see how it was uh it, let me let me kind of grade it I feel like for some things you don't need a grade, you know, it can just be what it, what it is, you know, do you agree? I, I, I wouldn't say that, that I take it in parts, but I'm just saying, I'm just saying that, that the, that the judgmental part of my brain is shut off during creation. Mm, okay. Purposely. On purpose. Like I'm yeah. not judging it. Like, yeah, I'll just, yeah. I'll just go. And sometimes I'm even working on a song and I'm feeling like I don't really like it, but I'll let yeah. it play out yes. because I feel like, you know what? Something is coming through me. I'll just, I'll just write it. I'll let it play out and we'll, we'll see later how it but, feels. But this is something I feel like this is, um, especially we'll, we'll talk about collaboration, uh, maybe next, but I feel like, especially when you're collaborating, this is something that is very key. Is, is this moment of how am I going to write a song that's truthful, that's intimate uh, with this other person in the room without, without, you know, how am I going to open myself to a, to a kind of um, a vulnerable state with another person? But if you can't do it with yourself, <laughs> if you can't be like open and vulnerable and say that, okay, no matter what is going to happen, I'm just going to roll with it then it's probably impossible to do with somebody else in the room. Don't you think? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I think, I mean, I, I, I'm very like, um, for me, everything is inside out process. Yeah. 
So if something bothers you, you need to look inside why you are bothered. If something feels yeah. uncomfortable, you don't, you don't point a finger and say, hey, you are making me feel uncomfortable. You're taking full responsibility for your feelings and you go deep dive into your own psychology and you fix that shit. There has to be a root, right? I mean, for, yeah. every, for everything, there's a, there's a root issue that's kind of, that's bringing it up to the surface, right? Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Um, so let's, we touched on collaboration real quick. I just want to, what are some of the first collaborations that you've done kind of that, that immediately spark joy, that immediately you think, oh yeah, I have good memories of, of these collaborations? Hmm. Hmm. I don't know. I just have had so many, you know, like I know that's what that's what I want to I want to get I want to get some of oh, them out of you. Yeah. You know what? Because because you sent me kind of the topic. You said that you want to talk about songwriting, so I did actually make some notes. And okay. one thing that just Great. like that that I was just reminded by that I was just reminded of, like like right literally five minutes before we went live. Is I yeah. I did this. Um, there are there are these songwriting camps that your publisher will send you to. Yes. Mm -hmm. And uh, I did one really amazing songwriting camp in the south of France. We were like mm. in this medieval castle, and there were mm -hmm. all like these country writers there. Mm -hmm. And by the mm -hmm. way, like country writers are like some of just the most talented, most humble, incredible. I mean, they're all Christian. You are Christian, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. And, and uh, it was an experience where basically everybody else in the room but me was Christian. Okay. And, uh, and we did a, like a prayer circle before the session. Okay. Which was kind of like, I hadn't done that at a session before. Okay. Um, I do that sometimes on my own before performance yeah, and stuff. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. But um, yeah, and somebody said like a beautiful prayer. And honestly, like we started channeling something else mm. in that room. So like that was really like, like a like a goosebump type of an experience. Yeah. And so uh, like even and, when and you're I'm collaborating having... with people, huh? even when oh. you're collaborating with people, like the the tone that you set, you know, before you even start, like uh, that that plays a big role, right? Kind of the atmosphere that you create with those people around you, right? I mean, for me, the atmosphere is everything anyway yeah yeah like in my everyday life too and and those songwriting sessions always really bummed me out where i wouldn't be able to because the first thing that i like to do is like we'll just hang for a few hours like let's yeah. talk yeah what's yeah, going yeah, on yeah, in yeah. your life and usually like titles will come out you know topics yeah, will come yeah, out somebody yeah, will say totally. something where you're like ah oh, let's do that yeah and yeah. then and and then it, it was it's always been really difficult for me to work with people who I don't really vibe with because I'm like not enjoying my day. Yeah. I but I have to say some pretty good music has come out of collaborations where, which I'm not enjoying at all. Really? Mm -hmm. Why do you think that is? Why? I, I think ultimately it just comes down to everybody being pretty good mm -hmm. at what they do, you know, but yeah. But let's just say that the behavior that I used to put up with at sessions, which no, nah, like I would never ever allow myself to like be treated a way where like somebody doesn't show up or like is oh, two hours late, okay. doesn't apologize, like narcissist yeah. shit, you know? Yeah, yeah. Like yeah, I yeah, cut yeah, yeah. all the abuse out of my life, so. Oh, okay, okay. I wasn't sure where you were going to go with that because I was like, what, I mean, what? what could you do at like oh. at a session that would be so offensive like i want to know somebody's <laughs> saying spill the tea well yeah. i used to let's just say i for example i used to work with like with a lot of urban producers they would be yeah. like three hours late they'd roll into yeah, the yeah, studio yeah. with like nine people hoes drugs this yeah. that like it was crazy like it's it really is like that you know and for them like i mean I, let's not even go into that because i mean i have yeah. stories but i mean i just think that maybe that's kind of what they're also trying to project into the songs that they're making they're trying to project some kind of a lifestyle or or something but it just it's i guess it's it's just not respectful for the people that you're working with i don't i don't think they're trying to project anything i i think they are just they just want to make money. Yeah. 
But and, I mean, that's... And, and it's a power place. It's, 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 a, uh -huh. it's a power play, you know? So yeah, it's like, yeah. they'll be two hours late, not apologize to like, just tell you that, yo, my time is obviously more valuable than yours, you know? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But I mean, do, do, you, do you feel like these things, they happen obviously to songwriters that are, that are more starting out? Uh, if you're starting no. out as a song, no, you don't feel that. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, I guess technically they'd have to feel like they don't have that much to gain from you. Yeah. Yeah, that's why they're that's why they're using this kind of play. Like, hey, I'm I'm kind of a big deal. You should be really thankful that you're in a session with me right yeah, now. Kind of a vibe, if, you know. Especially if you're a girl, they'll do that to mm -hmm. you. Yeah, it's kind of like a thing that happens. So I, I wasn't gonna I wasn't gonna to go there so much, but how, tell us a little bit about your because I mean I think for a lot of people this is an interesting part of your life. I mean obviously L.A. is glitz and glamour, you know, and but very but very superficial, right? Let's be it's honest. Not, I mean we I mean we yeah. all we all know the reality. <laughs> what was what were some of the main takeaways from your time as a songwriter in L.A. Say that, say that again, uh, you cut out. What were the, some of the main... Oh, sorry. What were some of the main takeaways from your time as a songwriter in L.A.? Um, well, depends what you want to look at. You want to look at the bright side, you want to look at the dark side, or you want to look at both. <laughs> I, 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 want, I want balance. I want dark and light. Okay. The bright side is that I got to learn the craft because the work ethic is on a totally different level than let's say what you would see For in sure. Estonia. I'm sorry, For it sure. just is what it is. It is. Like, yeah. It's, yeah. This yeah. is a small pond, that's an ocean. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. So sure. to, to like claw your way like through that shark pool, yeah. I do have to be like an Iron Man and- Ferocious, like, yeah. A little, you have to be crazy. You have to yeah. really, really, really want it and you have to be willing to pay the price which at some point I was like, no, absolutely yeah. not, you know? Yeah. Uh, but it doesn't have to be that way. If you have a really protective team that knows what they're doing, you have great guidance. Also, maybe awesome. your family knows how to guide you financially, politically, creatively. Awesome. Yeah. Basically, you need really, really, really strong support system. But like I went to LA alone from Elva, <laughs> Estonia. <laughs> <laughs> I just think that's I just think that's wild. I think that's wild. I mean because, I mean how how were you so what was the mindset that you were just like, you know what? See you later, Elva. I need a mix up. I'm gonna go to LA. No, you have no idea. I just told somebody somebody that story the other day. Basically on my twentieth birthday I moved, okay? Yeah. I had like a jean skirt that I had cut. And okay. I had Solid. like a t-shirt that I had like cut into a fringe and I had like gone to the sunbed a lot. Work so it. I had Work like it. fresh hair extensions. I got my nail did. I got my hair did. I was ready. <laughs> You're like, I'm ready for LA. Take... This is, yeah. That's the like, LA here starter I come. <laughs> That's the LA starter kit, right? <laughs> yep. I was ready. <laughs> oh. And then I think the first day when I went out, you know, I had like my long white hair and I had like my little shirt and my little jean skirt and like, like people started like stopping their cars, like trying to like fucking rape me, like doing weird shit. And I got like a big reality check of like, oh, wait a second, you know, maybe not. And then Whoa. like fast forward 10 years later, where like you go out, you have like a black hoodie, you have like a taser mm -hmm. in your pocket, you have like a fucking app on your phone that will send your location mm -hmm. to all your friends and you're just like ready to go. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> obviously I feel I like, very, I I was, feel like I was, that's, a, that's a part of life that Estonian people kind of, they just, they just don't have any idea of, they, I, don't, I feel like Estonians, no. they don't have like, um, the uh, mindset of like th that there could be some threat to them you know that's not something that they ever have to deal with in their lives but that's something that when you live in the states especially in in an area like you know urban la then it's just like yeah this is that's a reality yeah you'll get like raped and murdered like it's yep. a thing that happens mm -hmm. and it's a city of 25 million people like once you disappear like who the fuck's gonna look for you mm. really Who's gonna look for you? Yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah. 
So, okay, so that's, I guess, I get what, I get what you're saying about, like, the light and the dark. I've, at one point, there is, like, the world's, mo the world's maybe, well, debatable, but one of the greatest songwriters, you know, they live there. It's a hub, obviously, and you get to work with these people. Yes. And you see the work ethic, and it's just like, wow, this is mind-blowing, you know? It's incredible. I, it is. I, 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 um, I can't imagine, but, but, there's so, but there's so much more going on there uh and like i don't know just like the energy and the vibe is uh is not only hey let's let's you know be nice to each other <laughs> no it's, it, it's, no nobody it's, goes there to be nice to anyone exactly, everybody goes exactly. there to get famous to make money exactly yeah. that's it and that's what you have to kind of that you have to know that going into you know you have to know that's what you're that's what you're gonna get you know obviously. and 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 then there might become a point, like there became in my life, someone is like, you know, we have these dokes. Dokes, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we have this Somebody's... little, what, what would you say in English there? A called? scooter, like a, a, an electric scooter. It's almost like doing something under my window. Um, oh, okay. Wait, what were we saying? Oh, uh, we oh, oh just, I, yeah. I, I said, I said, there just became a point in my life where I was like, I don't want to do like, I don't want to be surrounded by people like that every day. Yeah. You know, I don't want to become that. Like, it's my worst fucking nightmare to ever become that. And, mm. and then I just did this whole crazy life change where I was like, I still want to make art. I yeah. still want to reach a lot of people with my art. Yeah. But I must be able to do it in a way where it's like con like conducive to my like mental health, you know. But see, but I I feel like that's something that maybe a lot of maybe some young songwriters. I think me too. I need to hear this. I need to hear what you're saying. Is mm -hmm. is um, especially when you're trying to balance songwriting and and family life. It's kind of the same thing. You have to know. Okay, what is the price that I'm paying? You know, what is, what am I actually paying to be doing these, you know, crazy amounts of sessions a day, going at it, you know, all week long um, without any rest. I feel like that's something that we need to hear as young mm -hmm. songwriters is like, we need to think of it in the long run and also kind of take care of ourselves in the process. And uh, would you agree? I mean, it's, yeah, it's, it's not something that you think of when you're maybe like 19 or 20 where you could yeah. just go like because i went nights and days and i didn't take weekends and i never visited my family in estonia yeah. and i mean i was just only like go 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 achieve 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 you know mm. and but it's like well i mean at some point you know you don't you don't want to wake up like 50 years old and you don't have like anything else in your life but like some people that give you likes on the internet <laughs> you know, yeah. no, that was really the, what I came to. I was like, well, you know, I, I I'm like, you know, like, what am I doing? I haven't, I haven't attended a birthday party of a relative for 10 years, you know? Yeah, yeah, that's huge. That's huge. Yeah. I, I love what you're saying. Uh, I just want to, I want to talk about uh, also, I just, w I was um, thinking about our talk and I was thinking about this one uh, about this one song that Argo, uh he played for me a while back. Uh, I think it was maybe a couple years ago, and it was. I think it's just one of your, you know, demos or something that you had you had made, and it immediately like I just I felt so connected to the song that I wanted to, I wanted the song for myself, and I, and Argo was like, "No, you're not getting that song. No, you're not getting it." And I was like, "Are you sure? Come on, I want I want to sing that song. I feel like that's I want to do that." Uh, and it is a song, I don't know. Can you give me a hint? It's called Fireflies. It's called Fireflies. Oh, yeah. You remember but, it? You know, you, you can't, you, but you can't talk about song titles like that because now we can't sell oh, it yeah, because that's right. you gave it away to all these fans. They're going to go we're talking. No, no, no. You can't. Daniel. No, they won't talk about it. Come they on. won't talk about it. They won't. They're not listening. They're not watching this. It's okay. Oh, I I'm sorry. I was supposed but, but to give you just a hint. I was supposed they... to give you a hint. Yeah, I'm sorry. But weren't they going to do that song with Cartoon? Are you going to go with them or are you going to do it with them or, or what's going on? 
so i don't know what the what at the moment what what where it's at it might mm -hmm. be in the works uh i may have just ruined or spoiled a huge big secret but anyways what my point was is that i felt an immediate really uh, great connection to these lyrics and i i guess i'm not going to spoil any of the lyrics any more than i already have but yeah. uh i just <laughs> i just wanted to say that 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 was a moment where I was sitting in the studio with him and I heard the song and I was just like, that's my story. I want to, I, I connect with that story. How easy is it for you to come up with these stories that people can connect themselves with? Um, you know what? I'm actually, I'm, I'm constantly like in a collection mode. So I have folders. Yeah. I, ha yeah. I have like a folder for titles. I usually start the song with a title. So I have titles for myself. Yeah, I basically con conceptually usually have like, I'm, I'm like two or three albums like ahead in yeah. my like conceptual creation. And then I have like a folder for pop titles. And this specific yeah. song that you're talking about, this was a pop song like for yeah. someone like for me, I, I actually were kind of wrote it like for Katy Perry. Okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. I was like, I just I, I just want to write something that Katy Perry would sing. Yeah, I can I can collab with her. It's all right. No worries. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> call her. Yeah, I'll give her a call. Hey but, but, uh, but I, I was, for somebody who's maybe starting out uh, writing writing songs, what would you say have been your? Obviously, we've talked about a lot of lessons so far. We've talked about putting in the work. We've talked about you know taking care of yourself in the process, not forgetting, you know, kind of who you are or your your structure of support around you in the process, you know, what other, what other kind of valuable lessons would you give somebody who's kind of, uh, who's kind of starting out who wants to write songs? I mean, obviously the thing that you said at first, you know, don't, don't send me your first demo, send me your like a thousandth, you know, demo, but what else? Well, I think, I think uh, anybody with a big dream, which is like when I, since I was little, I had this like really big dream. And everyone always told me that I can't do it. Uh -huh. And I took yeah. that opinion to account. Yeah. So I think one a, a piece of advice would be don't listen to anyone. It's great. Yeah. <laughs> because it is, because it is people, people don't. People, people's opinions aren't about who you are. People's opinions are about who they are. That's and it's great. their yeah. limited belief that doesn't believe that things are possible. So that means it's never going to be possible for them because they're mentally not. Yeah. Or they're projecting able. their insecurities, yeah. you know, onto you when it's yes. actually, Hey, wait a second. This is, this is, isn't about, this isn't mm -hmm. about me. It's actually about what they're going through right now. That is such a great thing to know. That's such a great thing to know that anytime you're getting, feedback, Negative or, feedback. Or critique from somebody you know that hey they're actually telling me through the prism of you know what they're going through right now so i don't have to always take everybody's feedback as a hundred percent and almost almost never take anybody's feedback unless they're certified yeah unless they're really they've maybe had a lot of success at your field or they're like a, a really, really just supportive person that loves you. And maybe they'll be able to give you some constructive criticism in a kind way that yeah. wouldn't leave you feeling bad. And then you can run with that. But everybody else can just like sit down. <laughs> <See ya. laughs> yeah. But what about for you? Sit who, down. <laughs> sit down. Be humble. What are the, who are the people for you who view, who you, when you finish something, when, when, you, when you get somewhere, who do you send it to? Hey, what do you think? Um, I would say right now it's probably my manager who I trust. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I don't, I don't, I don't really play my shit to people. I don't, I don't look for a lot of other opinions when I create because I'm really sure of what I create. That's great. You know, I've, I've really, I've done a lot of work on that where it's like, I know that what I will leave behind is my legacy and that's all I care about. And it's infused wow. with myself, with my energy, with my breath. And as long as it's true to me, I don't care. I don't even care how it does. Wow. Yeah. That's amazing. Uh, that's amazing. This is, this is so, I feel like this is so great what you're saying. Um, 
I mean, all the, a lot of times we as performers and singers, uh, we're, we're, we're looking for approval, right? You know, let's be honest. Um, yeah. But I feel like when, when we can reach kind of a level of, I don't know if it's like self-awareness or, or what it is when, when you're, when you're, tr I love what you said about legacy. This is something that no, I've been thinking sure. about. This is something that I've been thinking about lately too, is like each song that I, I release, I, I know that it's, I know that it's not going to be perfect, but I know that it's going to be perfect for this chapter, for this moment. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's like, it is, it is, a, it is a snapshot yeah. of who you are right now. I've also yes. made peace with that yeah. and it's never going to be perfect exactly. because if you keep exactly. evolving, then in yes. two years you'll be like, Oh, that's cute. Hopefully. Exactly. <laughs> but, but I've also exactly. made peace. I've also yeah. made peace where I'm just like, you know what? This is who I am right now. This is snapshot who I who I am right now. It's yeah. it's not that important ultimately because ultimately nothing is that important, and the universe will fucking implode into itself and yeah. like nothing will matter. And, <laughs> but but like this work, this deep work of like getting free of the approval seeking, I've yeah. I've really only been able to do that work because now I literally spent what now like four years in the forest by myself so so I, i've lived wow. like in a monastery you know? yeah. i've done the work you know yeah. what i mean yeah oh yeah like in sure. here and in here and with my connection you know so it's like it's it's not something that i would would have ever reached if i was to let's say <clears throat> stay in america that would have yeah. never happened i would have never come to these conclusions i don't think that's a great point that actually, yeah, that environment that you surround yourself with that definitely plays a big part in your development too. Yeah. But I wanted to ask real quick, are there some, has there been a moment when you kind of looked back at some of the stuff that you have written or released and you're like, ah, oh, I just, yeah, I'm not sure about that. Yeah. A lot, <laughs> a lot of my work, I look at like that. That's so great. That's so great. But at the same time, uh, when did you start to realize like that? Okay, it's just a snapshot. It's just it was for that chapter. When when did you kind of have that realization? I think probably the past few years. Okay. You know, okay, where, cool. where like I like I know where I want to go. Like even like with my live shows, I know where I want to go, and I can look at it like constructively and be like, okay, this still needs to come up. This needs to come up. This needs to come up. But I can yeah. like kind of say these things to myself without beating myself up and saying, yo, girl, I know you're doing your best right now. And this is what it is right now. This is your best at this moment in time. And in yeah. three years, you'll be fucking incredible. Yeah. More incredible. Like you'll yeah. always be more incredible if you just keep evolving and you keep putting in the time and the work. That is huge. Okay, so much, so much gold we have so far, but th we, there's just a, a couple more things I want to get out of you. Let's talk about... Um, okay, we've talked about like audio for you. I feel like the visual part of your, your art is just like, it's just as important. Like they yeah. are, it is audio visual. Like it is audio visual. Is, exactly. Like how did, has it always been like that for you? Or when did you get into the idea that man, my visual has to support the audio so well? Like, when did you get there? I, I think it kind of always was. Okay. Yeah. But with the, with the visual it's the same thing that like we were talking about this developing a skill, you know, because like yeah. during like, let's say when I did walk in on air, yeah. you know, and I, and I would tell my record label, I was like, I want to wear these tutus and you see, I glued little black bows on them and I'm kind of <laughs> going for this like Lolita thing. And they're telling like, yeah. no, 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 we have this stylist for you. And I think we went to like a shop on Rodeo drive and we bought me like a $400 pair of jeans. Uh, and we did like a fifty thousand fifty thousand dollar photo shoot. My first photo shoot was a fifty thousand dollar photo shoot because this was still the time when like labels labels were spending money. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> do you know what I could do with fifty thousand dollars now? Oh my gosh, that is intense. I mean, and yeah. if you, but but at the same, I, time, I could do like three albums worth of visual I with like fifty k. I like, know, I know. It's ridiculous. <laughs> yeah. But it was just that I didn't know, you know, and I yeah. trusted people. And like, I'm, I'm really glad that the kind of like the walking on air 
thing eventually like came together and like kind of like got the ball rolling in that like oh like like I can also be like a visually interesting artist and back then yeah. it wasn't even a thing that artists did yeah you know now it's gotten so visual now it's yeah. gotten so merged I think with also the social media and I love seeing yeah. that like all the people on Instagram like they're really good at photography actually yeah yeah right like yeah, they're they good are. photographers, the kids, Definitely. they're good photographers. Like that's so cool, you know? Yeah. And they're coming up with like creative ideas and they're all these filters and this and that. It's like when I started, like none of this was happening. Yeah, it's like everybody nowadays has like a crash course in composition just because mm -hmm. you're, you're, com you're always com composing something for your visual, you know, this whatever this aspect ratio is for your phone, right? So yeah. everybody's always thinking about composition. Yeah, that is, that's, I think that's true, yeah. Mm -hmm. So anyway, but, but, so visual part has always been a huge part for you. And yeah, uh, but, but that's also, yeah. but that's also something it's like, you know, it's like, it's like every video you do, every outfit you make, it's like, now I, now I'm, because at first I just kind of started like gluing things on things and it was kind of yeah. like, jank <laughs> we have this word in a, little bit janky. Janky. a little bit janky like, yeah, yeah. Eh. <laughs> you know and like some of the things and i thought like i put a spike on something and it was so creative and so great and it's like now i'm now i'm building furniture like all the all the furniture in my house i built yeah you know so and now, and now i'm thinking i can i can build a house it's not really it's not rocket science yeah you know oh my gosh i i thought that this I thought that this discussion was going to go one way. Now you're talking about building houses. This is like, you are blowing my mind right now, but I know what, but I see what you mean. Like the more that you create, the more that you realize that you can create, you know? Yes. Mm -hmm. And once you make something, you're like, Oh, I just made a table. Yeah. I, 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 I guess I could make like a desk. I could, I could exactly. really, I can, I can make that desk that I want. Exactly. Yeah. yeah and now yeah. I'm oh, looking at like this. Huge. You know, my house has like this. You can't really see, but see. my house yeah, here a fire, has like... a fireplace or something? That's my fireplace. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. But my house here has like this really amazing, like really nice low couch. Uh-huh. And I'm like, that's nothing. I can make that couch. <laughs> exactly. I mean, literally, it's just like plywood and uh, porolon. Oh, Stuffing. Gosh. Uh, and uh, and, and the cover yeah. and they yeah, have yeah. a sewing machine so you know it's fine <laughs> i see but i think that that's something i think that's really uh unique and cool about you is a lot of people would would i don't know i i feel like that's unique to you is that when you love to create one thing you're gonna love to create you know a dozen things. it's all the like, same it's the same but but i even feel for me i feel like when i get to mold something you know like when i had sculpture classes back in art school i was like this is i'm ma i'm ma i'm create i'm creating something you know i feel i just I, I love that feeling i think that's like that's uh addictive you know is to be to be able to create something uh and i like i, I like seeing <laughs> i like hearing your stories about how you're kind of almost addicted to creating stuff too <laughs> like okay what am i gonna make next you know yeah, but I think it's just, it's a really sacred energy because like even think of that word, both in English and in Estonian, creator, creation, yeah. creativity. Yeah. It's for me, creativity is like when you, when you tap into that thing, which is why I was saying before to remove the judgment, remove the doubt, allow yourself to have that like divine, to, to be like God basically. Mm. I think mm. once you tap into creativity, you are like God and it's just so high frequency, you know? Yeah. Yeah. No, for sure. Because yeah. even in the Bible, it says like that we are created in God's image, you know? So we are in that. We sense, are like we, God. We are, we, we love to create, you know, in that sense. Yeah, for sure. That's, mm -hmm. oh my gosh, that's so great. Yeah. Okay. And, and, he, uh, and he got so fun. into it in seven days, boom. Yeah, <laughs> he's just like, you know what, mic drop. You know, this is it, yeah. <laughs> Some things went a little, but that's okay. I, but I mean, yeah, well, well that's, a, that's a different discussion. I mean, that's a whole uh, other. That's a whole, that's a that's whole. That's a whole. Oh my gosh, yeah. 
Um, listen, quickly, bef- we're, we're wrapping up now. Uh, I have five questions that I've asked everybody who, is, who have been a part of this series. Um, I asked my friend Ryan, who's a designer, and I asked uh, my friend uh, Kizu, from, who's a Finnish artist, who was with me last week. And I want to ask you these five questions too. And these are like rapid questions. So okay. you just tell me the first thing that you, you think of. So describe the first photograph that you think of right now. Uh, my first day of school, uh, my sister and me and my mom and dad. Where, where are you in your, in front of the school or? It, it was in like a, we have like this little square in my town. Okay. Okay. In the middle of Elva square. Okay. Awesome. In the Elva. Oh, love it. Okay. Uh, number two, what is your least favorite texture? What, what's my least what? Your least favorite texture, like a texture that you just, you just, ugh. It's that insulation ma- material that they put, uh, you know, the white one that makes like a squeaky? Glasville. Like Ei, the, the, see, the, see, see, vaata, no. millega nad nagu, kui mingi teleka või midagi tellid, vaata, siis on nagu need valged, vaata. Oh, sty- styrofoam, styrofoam. Styrofoam, I hate that. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> Okay. I hate styrofoam. Oh man, that's so cool. Uh, yes. Okay, name one big adulthood letdown. So something that you thought as a child, oh, this is going to be great when I grow up, and then it turned out to be a major letdown. <laughs> really, just one. <laughs> I know it's it's hard to pick. <laughs> uh, fame. Great, great. Awesome. Okay, what is the prettiest sound in the world? The sound of nature in my moon mm. temple. Great. And last one. What is the what would be the name of your pet turtle? Hmm. The, see, this is this is for me. This is not a rapid fire question because <laughs> my my life is very carefully curated. Yeah, yeah. This is like I would have to take a week and make a list of names, right? I'm sorry. Yeah, you know, like my last pet, the cat that I got this spring, I called him Bulu. Bulu, yeah, wizard. Bulu. Okay, yeah, cool. Wizard, yeah. No, sorry. This is. I'm sorry. No. We're just we're just not gonna name the turtle. Let it no. let it be. We'll we'll name him in a little while once we get to know him. Once we get to see his vibe, then we'll we'll name him. Right? Yeah. Exactly. Yes. Yes. Awesome. Listen, uh, I just want to thank you again uh, for your time, for your commitment to this, uh, for your talking about these things. Um, I honestly, I feel like you have been created so specially. Uh, and you've been given such amazing gifts. Uh, and I love that you are sharing your gifts with the world. I love that the way that you create is in an uplifting and inspiring way. I mean, if you just look at the comments that are coming from up here, then it's just like people are just like, thank you, Gerli, for writing these songs. Thank you for what you're doing. I see love from Brazil and Argentina. I see like I see so much love for you for for the way that you're using your gifts to kind of encourage people so thank you again for your time thanks for being here Kerli. yeah and also from my end daniel <laughs> <laughs> i i want to add to all of uh, your fans who are watching and also new fans that are watching from brazil and argentina <laughs> daniel is maybe it's because he's a, you're also american right you're half american yeah uh, Daniel is just one of these rare people that every time you meet them, you will instantly get like an uplift because your vibe is so mm. high. You you come with an open heart and it's mm. a very rare type of energy that you bring to the table, which is also why I agreed to talk to you here tonight. So mm. keep sharing your light and doing your yes. thing and uh, maybe, we'll, uh, maybe we'll have some more songs together. Let's do and it. And thank you. Thank you again so much. Have a great evening. I'll talk to you soon. Ciao. Thanks for everybody. Ciao. Bye. Bye.